All right, everyone get in here. Don't be shy. We have a lot to discuss. For anyone out of the loop, we had a community live stream happen about the upcoming January 30th update. Many things were said, shown, and I want to talk about it. Let's start with the best piece of news yet. The Mark IV it looks amazing. I'm extremely biased in favor of it. Of all the Mjolnir armor designs, the Mark IV is my favorite. I think it, it just looks looks badass, and I was paranoid as hell that this was going to be an armor kit. I was worried they were going to stuff it in the shop for 20 bucks, similar to Combat Evolved Chief. I saw that silhouette, I was like, don't, don't you do it, and they didn't do it. It's an armor core, it's free, thank Master Cheeks for that. I am never taking it off when it drops. We got three helmets from the Halo TV show, they're gonna be ultimate challenge rewards, and uh, I don't care. I will most likely never use these. Cross core shoulders are happening with this update we all knew it was on the way they told us it was going to happen and even though it's pretty late right because this is something we wanted on launch i'm still thankful it's finally happening we got three operations first is spirit of fire then we'll have cyber showdown 3 and the yapping 2 i don't really want to talk about these in more detail until they actually come out but i do want to talk about that assault rifle skin i'm gonna be real with you i don't like it this this is obviously a callback to the old look of the assault rifle and when you see how it looks in the other games, we're talking mainly Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 3, and eh, sure I'll throw in Halo 4 as well. And then you compare it to how it looks in Halo Infinite, mm, yeah, I, I don't vibe with that. Maybe it's the way it's being held, but the proportions just seem off to me, the top of it just seems too big or inflated. I don't really like the edges towards the end of the gun, I'm not feeling this one guys. But we have a new map. I can't really talk about how it plays since it's not out yet. I do like that they're trying a bit more with the environmental mechanics. You know, the little camo hallway looks like it will matter to some extent. The last time they tried environmental mechanics was with Prism and those needle crystal explosions. They were pretty worthless. It was pretty disappointing. Now, I'm not a forage wizard, so don't expect much from me in terms of analysis, but I got no complaints when they add more to it. Forge mode and people making forge content are the backbone of Halo Infinite considering a lot of content we've been getting is made in forge mode. But the Covenant palette is on the way. I think it looks good. You'll be able to color plants as well as decals and more things that I genuinely cannot understand but I'll assume it's good. There's apparently two more palettes but they're not being released on January 30th with this update. They got what they call but don't call the alien palette. I'm just gonna call it the avatar palette. It. And this, which I mean, come on, we all know what this is. Uh, we're probably excited to see what this brings to Halo Infinite. Now, they did talk about playlists, but aside from them explaining the process of how they go out and get community content to work with, most of this discussion, besides three community maps being brought to BTB pretty soon ish, they did not give an exact date. This is all somewhat vague. They said we'll be getting a refresh on Husky Raid, Squad Battle. BTB firefight and more playlist content that's different from the others. We don't know much beyond any of this like dates or modes or maps. It's basically just hey more content is on the way and it's going to be mostly community driven with 343 running quality assurance in the background. I mean they did say they plan on doing more original content and maps which is something they should be doing but who knows when and how much of it will be original. I'm not really surprised this is the route they're taking because of what they said say later but we'll get to that and yes they did bring up match composer but it's not new information we know it's cooking we just we just don't know when it's gonna drop but my god we really need it me personally i can't wait to filter out modes like oddball and capture the flag and yes they're still working on their networking fix again not something unknown we're all just kind of waiting for the broader rollout to happen now they did bring up cosmetic progression and jesus christ they said a lot of stuff really fast. It's also the topic that got the least amount of time, which I'm sort of annoyed at because I think 
this is one of the most important issues for Halo Infinite to solve? Here's the gist of it. They are aware players want more ways to earn content as well as old content. Yeah, no shit. It's been a thing we've been complaining about since launch, like earnable credits to buy things from the shop, a spreadsheet or a token system for the ultimate challenges instead of this time-gated bullcrap. Bring back those operations that most people missed because they rightfully dropped this game in the first one to two months of Halo Infinite. I'll just kind of say MCC players might be familiar uh, with something like Spartan Points and some of, some of the work the MCC team did to try to also address uh, earnable content and that is the direction that the infinite team is currently also exploring what? that's it you can't just pull my leg like that all right i've been complaining about halo infinite's progression system for over two years this is the first time i've heard them say anything about it like they're working on something and it's going to be similar to halo mcc i mean we we don't know any specifics and i don't have huge expectations it could be extremely underwhelming just this once until that day arrives I would like to have some hope that my number one gripe I have with this stupid game may in fact get addressed. I demand someone hand me my dose of copium right now. It's totally gonna be a great year for Halo Infinite. Um, I mean, what's really left? Ranked mode? Look, look, dude, I don't care about ranked mode. I've said it before, but until you give better ranked mode rewards besides emblems and a weapon charm, I just can't bring myself to suffer through this like I did back in Season 1. One, but apparently the HCS year one cosmetics are unlocked for multi-core use. I can appreciate that. They're also adding more esports cosmetics to the shop and I mean, I got nothing else to really say on that. And that's it guys, we've covered everything. I'm just saying season six seems a bit on the low side for content. The Mark IV looks nice, but only one map, cross core shoulders, forge features, an operation pass. Something's not quite right. Where's the Falcon? Where's that silly looking shotgun or a new game mode? Eh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's fine. They probably just forgot to talk about it. You know, Halo Infinite has a bright future ahead of it. I can't wait for season six and future seasons like seven, eight. It's really weird they didn't mention seasons. That's that's a bit strange. Um, I do want to talk really quickly. Uh, I've seen some questions in chat, and I just want to clarify. Um, as we approach our January 30th release, um, basically people are like, well, what about season six? Or why aren't we calling this season six? Um, we're, we're basically, we're making a shift in how we're approaching uh, Infinite going forward. And for MCC players, it's probably going to sound very familiar too. Um, the gist of it is that we're, we're kind of no longer referring to seasons. We're shifting away from seasons. Um, okay. Look, everyone, everyone just calm down, you know, take a deep breath and fucking panic. Nah, I'm, j I'm just joking. But really, this is a really funny yet fascinating choice. There are many things to take away. I say funny at first because they very recently achieved seasonality and now they're taking it away? No seasons means our placebo credit system that wasn't really a credit system is gone now? I, I just find that hilarious. But anyway, let me tell you what I think about this. Obviously no, this isn't them saying we're jumping ship, but this is them announcing they are slowly but surely stepping away from Halo Infinite to allocate resources to other things. We a dedicated team working on supporting Halo Infinite and continuing to deliver going forward. But also, uh, yes, we have additional teams now that are accelerating towards the future, working on brand new projects. Okay, well, I mean, he didn't explicitly say it, but it feels heavily implied if you ask me. Even though I didn't expect this to happen, I'm not really surprised. The signs were there starting from season four. There was a growing imbalance between community content, old Halo content, and 343's own original original content. Campaign AI as well as a lot of the other Forge editions, they were signs that 343 wanted to hand this game to the community. A lot of what we've been getting is community content, mostly in terms of maps. A lot of it is just old Halo editions, and it just wasn't really doing its job bringing people back on mass and keeping them engaged. So when I hear seasons are over and it's going to be operations similar to Halo MCC content drops when they ended seasons for it. It all just says to me they're not interested in investing in Halo Infinite.
themselves in a timely manner going forward. At the end of the day, I don't blame them despite how much copium and positivity the community desperately tried to inject into Halo Infinite. Despite what other content creators might have said about 2024 being the year for Halo Infinite and the population is allegedly thriving, the reality is there's just too much bad baggage with Halo Infinite. I'm sure Microsoft knew this and views this game as a failure considering they had to restructure 343 Industries. It's a free-to-play game that launched really poorly. It's riddled with microtransactions like the in-game shop and generic battle passes. The campaign was split from the multiplayer for $60. It's still crap. It hasn't gotten any support beyond just the things that should have been there on launch. You know, why put in all this work with Halo Infinite in a timely manner when a good amount of people won't play it because it has a bad reputation? And that's on top of the franchise declining in cultural significance for the past decade. There are much better games people would much rather be playing right now. It's better to just get Halo Infinite to a functioning state, put more community content into the playlists, add more old Halo additions slowly, add more shop bundles for the whales, and just allocate people to work on a new Halo game. That's more or less how I'm viewing this announcement, and half of me is a bit disappointed in them, because some things are up in the air. Are we going to get playable elites? If we do, is it going to be... is it going to be with invasion mode? Are we getting assassinations? Are we getting legacy weapons and vehicles like the Falcon? Are we getting customization for banished weapons? Weapons or the Forerunner weapons? Are narrative story events completely over? These are things I think they should do for Halo Infinite. I think they owe it that much since I don't believe this game has been completely redeemed yet. However, the other side of me is somewhat relieved, even just a bit happy actually, believe it or not. I think it's because I can sort of let my expectations drop now that they've announced support for Halo Infinite is going to start declining. There's just just no point in holding Halo Infinite to a reasonable standard anymore. As much as I would have liked Halo Infinite to succeed, I believe this game needed to fail to be a wake-up call to everyone. I think this is what this whole scenario is, and it's not all doom and gloom they still plan on adding things to this game, it's just a matter of what and when. You may start seeing a decline in player population again as time goes on, it really just depends on how they handle the content. But I don't think Halo Infinite will die. I mean, 343 and what's left of the Halo Infinite community won't allow this game to rest, at least until the next Halo game. Hopefully, whenever that happens, they get it right. I'm telling you right now, zero tolerance if your next Halo game does not launch feature complete. I don't want to hear anyone or the community trying to make excuses or compromising on mistakes. None of that. You tell me we're getting split screen co op on launch, we better get split screen co op on on launch. Don't make it free to play, no microtransactions, no in-game shop, no coding system, let me pick my own damn colors, I don't want to be told I gotta drop money for the color white. Give us a good Halo campaign with a complete if not good coherent story. I don't want to be told I have to read 20 different books to barely understand what the hell is happening in the video game. Halo deserves to have a good game release after over 13 years of this franchise being disrespected. And and Halo Infinite could have been that game, but it wasn't. And based off of this decision, it still isn't. I hope the next Halo game is, and for God's sake, take your time if you have to. Anyway, that's about my two cents, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about finished here. I don't know why you're still here, you should leave now. After you like, comment, and subscribe, of course.